Jones here with Concrete CMS. I'm going to show you how to set up the multi-site uh, mode in Concrete so you can run what feels like multiple websites out of a single install. Now you can use this for just subdomains on a single domain. So um, that's what I'm going to be showing you, you know, something something dot franzbruna.com versus something else dot franzbruna.com. Uh, you can also use this to set up completely different domain sites that resolve um, at their own URLs that have nothing to do with each other. Uh, we use this for sites that have some relation. So you're going to be running everything out of a single database with a single set of users. And you can lock permissions down, but it is fundamentally a single concrete install. So I would not recommend setting up like a whole hosting company and just running completely different client sites through here um, as if this were like... Um, cPanel or Plesk or like a hosting control panel tool. Um, but if you run an organization, you've got multiple websites, particularly if you're going to be sharing content across them, um, that starts to make sense. I think it really fits for uh, branches or a franchise, um, something where you have a network of related sites. So let's get into it. It's a little bit complicated. Uh, and so we might start and stop a little bit, but let's get into it. Um, I am in a concrete install, this is 911, and I am in system settings, and you get to this kind of main map of all the different places you're going to need to go. And you are going to need to get around a little bit. Uh, so the first thing to keep in mind um, is you're going to need advanced permissions on. So let's go ahead and turn advanced permissions on. Um, once you turn advanced permissions on, you can't go back, so be thoughtful, but it should take all of your uh, regular permissions and turn them into advanced permissions. Uh, and now you just have more nuanced control over permissions. Um, you're also going to need, or you don't need to, but you might want to um, come visit your name and attribute section. Uh, so give me my main site a name. I've also added a couple attributes. So you can add attributes here. Uh, and these are the same attributes that we use against users and files and pages and all sorts of stuff. Um, if you're running microsites, you probably have some different information you want to associate with them. So in my example, it's a tagline. There's a, the main branch address for this website. Like maybe you want to change colors and so you're, you're going to have some like design controls tied to this. But um, think of these as attributes associated with your site. You may not have used them in a concrete install before just because, hey, if you're only running one site, why do I it's just, you know, it's kind of like a global variable. But now that we're going to be running multiple sites in this install, um, you don't have to, but you, you might want to add an attribute first. It'll make um, things make a little bit more sense later. Uh, so we'll go back to systems and settings. Okay, the other um, kind of housekeeping thing that you have to do first is make sure that a canonical URL is already set for um, your site. A canonical means it will always revolve that to that URL. Um, I can never remember where it is, but here you go. If you start typing canonical, uh, you can see I have not set one here. So what I want to do um, is actually HTTPS bronzemaruna.com. That's me. Um, and hopefully, if things are right, this shouldn't fork my site. Um, great, so it seems to still be doing what I need it to. Another key point on the canonical URLs page, uh, leave this off. Only render it canonical URLs. Um, if you have that on, it, Concrete is going to only want to serve your site at this main canonical URL, so that has to be off. Okay, so now we are going to go into multi-site settings. And we're going to enable multi-sites. And if your settings are right, you'll get a green box. All right, so now multi-site mode is on, but we still haven't really set up any different sites for it to run. So let's go over to site types and let's add a site type. Um, let's call this, um, I don't know, franchise. You choose a theme and a template for the homepage in that theme um, for the site. Now, site type is like when you make a new multi-site, you're going to pick a type and it's going to create it in the following these instructions in the spirit of this site type. So, um, you know, 
important to remember you can set up multiple sites maybe you have a franchise thing you also have a partner uh, um, thing and those those guys have slightly different maybe have a different theme maybe have a different um, kind of skeleton core set of pages uh, so you can configure all of this in the site types let's take you through the site types so we made a few we'll go into franchise here um, details is just summary details about it edit lets you change the um, settings that we made when we first created it skeleton is the site tree that we're going to make every time you create a new site of this um, site type um, you need to change permissions in this to, to match you should probably use the root um, admin user to pull this off um, but you can build out a tree of, um, of pages that you're always going to make every time you, you spin up a new a franchise site uh, default groups so you can add multiple groups here um, to that will be created every time you generate a new site of this type uh, and they'll be created in the group hierarchy so if I were to make a bunch of franchise sites and I were to have Cleveland Portland Toledo um, every time I made one I'd have Toledo and underneath that I would have site editor and Cleveland site editor and so you could put people in those groups um, and then you can build your skeleton site to be aware of that attributes uh, here are those attributes that we had set up at the main site level um, and so these will be automatically added to each new site um, of that type so um, you know, when, when I build a new franchise site, I want to give it a custom tagline and um, pick the address that it's at. Uh, and that's everything that you need at the site type level. So now I'll go back to um, multiple site hosting. And if I say add a site, I'm going to choose between the site types available. So I'll pick franchise. Uh, give it a handle so each site has a handle and a name you can use the handle in code so if you're trying to do programmatic stuff based on the type of site that or the name of the specific site that you're in um, you can do that here so we'll say um, this is the Portland franchise um, the spell fronds um, canonical URL should have HTTPS and we're gonna say Portland maroon.com uh, the time zone is the default time zone for the site. So when it, you are using the calendar or the conversations block and it's posting when something is posted, like in the interface, what time zone are we going to apply to time when we are rendering content to the visiting site user? Now hit add. Site's created successfully. Um, you can see I can actually map, here's the same details. Uh, you can change all these Elsewhere, if you want to change a new handle name, you should just make a new site. You can change these from um, the main interface. I'll show you that in a minute. Um, if I go to domains, you can add additional domains. So if I wanted to have multiple subdomains pointing to this single uh, subsite, I could I could set that up here. Um, you will notice with multi-site on, like this little guy has been added up top. So parts of the dashboard will now change. Um, to let you pick what um, what you're looking at. So let's see if I go to um, site name. We'll do it there. <laughs> Where is that? Name and attributes. Right, so on name and attributes, um, you can see up here now is a drop down. So this is the main default site. I switched to Portland, and now I am changing... Um, the uh, this attribute for this site that I've just set. Um, so parts of the interface will will kind of deal like with that. Um, other parts of the interface will show you in line. So a good example would be if I come to the site map now, um, I can do view up to, and you can see right here, I can choose one site on one side and the other side on the other side. And I can actually drag and drop pages um, across. So I can say, oh, copy the about page over there to the Portland guy. Um, 
because I have wildcard DNS set up, should be as simple as coming right here. Oops. And yep, yeah, here is the empty site that I just made, the one about page that I moved over. Um, obviously, you know, nothing in here yet. Um, because it's a different subdomain, you will probably need to log in here as well. Um, you can configure your way around that, but um, you know, it just makes sense at, at a glance, kind of make each, each one its own little experience. So that is multi-site. Uh, again, a really good way to organize a bunch of different web properties inside of a single larger web presence. Um, you know, as you can see, you can lock all this down with permissions, and in fact, you're going to find it a little uh, fussy to set up. You want to use the administrator account and um, dig around because um, you know there's a lot of defaults to try to get right here. Um, so you, you know, I would not recommend using this for hosting a thousand different sites that have nothing to do with each other, um, just because you're got like a, a weird SaaS budget hosting platform play. Um, but if you are uh, running a bunch of somewhat related sites and you've got a single user base that you want to let edit different parts of them or have people have access to different subsites but share information across all of them, this can be a really powerful way to manage a web presence like that. Thank you.